Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Wednesday, November 1st. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Toyota sells more cars each year than any other company. It had similar big dreams when it created its own in-house technology startup in 2021. It hired an American tech whiz to run it and set about trying to build software for its cars that could become a standard for the whole industry. But things have not worked out as planned. Our reporter River Davis spoke to executives and current and former employees at both Toyota and the startup called Woven Planet. She's here to talk about the plans and what happened. So River, can you tell us more about why Toyota formed this startup? So Toyota started this unit basically because Toyota and the whole rest of the auto industry right now are facing just enormous changes in the technology that they've been producing for almost a century in the case of Toyota. So cars, much more than they have in the past, are resembling what we like to call computers on wheels. So the functions that used to be really defined by a part like an engine are now very much reliant on software and consumers want in-depth entertainment systems and autonomous driving. And so these are not areas that companies like Toyota have had expertise in in the past, whereas they're facing competition from other companies like Tesla and China's BYD that are entering the industry recently with a decent prowess in software So Toyota's goal with this startup was to create a separate organization because within the Toyota group, and actually the former CEO Akio Toyota spoke about this, but he was struggling to push innovation within Toyota because it is such a large group. It has a legacy of manufacturing. It's bureaucratic. And so this new startup he hoped would help Toyota navigate this time of significant change. And how did Toyota go about that? So Akio Toyota was really a proponent of creating this company. He personally invested in the company. He handpicked a CEO who used to be at Google, and the company was named Woven Planet, which was a nod to Toyota's history as a loom maker in the 1920s. And they really kind of fashioned it in the sense of a Silicon Valley startup. If you go to their office in central Tokyo, There are hammocks and plants all over the walls and ceilings and segways. And it's just a stark difference from Toyota's headquarters, which are south of Tokyo in a kind of rural area of Japan. The lights are kept dim. Oftentimes they will stop elevator service and uh, crank down the AC when there are periods of times where they want to cut costs. What kinds of projects did Toyota give to Woven Planet? Essentially, they tasked the company with really dreaming big, take on huge projects. One of the projects that they're working on is building an entire city of the future at the base of Mount Fuji to test out autonomous driving cars and smart homes that have computers and robots in them. The other major project that Woven Planet was setting out to do for Toyota was create a really important software platform for its cars. So that means... Basically, the in-vehicle software, along with autonomous functions, the cars were supposed to be connected to the cloud and city infrastructure, communicating with each other, collecting data that can be used to train the software on the vehicles further on consumer preferences. It was a really broad project. And two years later, that's where we really saw the breakdown start to happen. Tell us more about that. Where do things stand with the unit now? what Toyota has discovered is that the idea of creating a separate startup and then trying to meld that into an automaker that has been around for 86 years is really difficult. Woven Planet set out originally with these really broad goals. It wanted to create a software that would be a standard for the entire automotive industry It wasn't just thinking about software and cars, it was thinking about how it would connect cars to the rest of the world. And Toyota quickly discovered that it didn't understand what Woven Planet's vision for that software was. And ultimately, the goals were so broad that it was difficult to pin that software to specific vehicle launches. So what we're seeing right now with Toyota Just over the past half year, there's been significant changes at Woven Planet. So they renamed the startup Woven by Toyota. They put a lot of Toyota executives on the board of the company. 
They kicked out the previous managers, essentially are just bringing the whole company closer to Toyota so that the two can collaborate more and work together to meet specific timelines that Toyota's aiming to achieve. Have we seen this with other car companies in attempt to get into software or maybe even some stumbles when it comes to reaching more into technology than into their traditional car building base? Yes, this story is very much not limited to Toyota. Across the industry, we've seen these legacy automakers that have been around for decades really struggling to tackle this question of how to pursue innovation when it comes to software and other technical capabilities. Just thinking of Volkswagen, it created a unit called Cariad, which was supposed to handle its software. And recently there's been reports of restructuring and layoffs at that company uh, that have impacted vehicle launches for Volkswagen as well. What automakers are finding is that going forward, they're going to have to be more open to collaborating with companies that work specifically on software. And another point is that these automakers are just going to have to keep stumbling until they find the right recipe. Industry experts who comment to the journal about this recent Woven Planet restructuring, they say automakers like Toyota, like Volkswagen, they have the financial resources and kind of the staying power to be able to try and fail and try and finally get it right. All right, that was our reporter, River Davis. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.